What's up, guys? This is Ddon.life. My name's Dan Wilson. And I've talked a lot about on this podcast before these two books, The 24-Hour Diet and The PEO Solution. Well, today we have a very special guest. He is the author of these two books. His name is Professor Brian Peskin. Professor, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, can I just start by telling you a little story? Of course. Okay, uh, 12 years ago about, I was in college and I was in the absolute worst shape of my life. I was, you know, it was the university party environment, excessive drinking, uh, excessive smoking, and a lot of fast food, a lot of McDonald's, a lot of Burger King and pizza, and just a lot of processed foods in general. Well, ultimately I got sick twice. I went to the hospital and the first time was for like pink eye. I got pink eye in both eyes, had to go to the hospital, terrible experience. Didn't wake up, um, but a couple months later, I had gastroenteritis, and that was miserable, absolutely miserable. I was in the ER for over a day, just the worst pain, dry heaving. Um, you know, they gave me morphine, they gave me antibiotics, and uh, that was enough to wake me up. So I made the decision to get healthy. So I started going online, researching, trying to find what's the best thing to get healthy. I started following the basic, you know, recommendations. You know them. Omega-6 is bad, yeah. low fat. You need fish oil, high uh, complex carbohydrates in the morning. And, uh, you know, I worked out a lot. I started working out and I felt a little better, but mm -hmm. I was always hungry. Yep. And luckily, I made a friend, and she she sent me your first book, Beyond the Zone. A long time ago, yeah. Yep. And after that, this was 2007. After that, finally, someone started making sense. I read that book, and it was like, oh, my God, this makes perfect sense. So I started taking the protocol. Yeah. My eczema went away completely. Uh yeah my mental clarity. I could read yeah. a page from a book and I could remember what I read. Yeah. Laser attention. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I've just, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, for, it was because of you that I was able to, you know, pull myself out of that rut and take my health back. So, so thank you so much. My pleasure. You look good. <laughs> thank you. So do you. Um, so I have many questions for you. I've been, you know, watching every lecture I can get my hands on from you. Um, the website, yeah. Yep. However, I think a lot of people that are watching this on my podcast, yeah. they probably, this might be the first time. So could you just start by giving us a little background about yourself and how you got into this? Yeah, sure. I'm a trained engineer from MIT, electrical engineering. So I, I know systems. So ask how I got in this field. My wife became diabetic doing everything right. High carb, low fat, everything you're saying, exercising her tail off and was thin. Type one diabetic in her 30s. So it was Brian, what do I do? So I went to the health store just like anybody else would do. And one book is by a high carb guy like Ornish or McDougal. And the other one is by a low carb guy, you know, lots of fat and protein like an Atkins. So I look at both, you know, they're both written by MDs who I believe my answer is nobody. I believe science. Fortunately, there are two sciences. There's biochemistry and physiology. And I live in Houston. So the MD Anderson Cancer Center was nice enough to the Texas Medical Center to let me use their medical library. And after years of going through it, it was my goodness. Everybody says this, and the science is the exact opposite. No wonder everybody is so sick. And I started looking at cell membranes, and I came across Otto Warburg's work. MD, PhD, Nobel Prize winner, greatest physiologist of the 20th century, uh, was talking about lack of oxygen causing cancer, the prime cause of cancer. All secondary causes go back to this. And then I was playing around with different oil combinations because we have an oil lipid membrane. So we have 100 trillion cells, every one of them has a bilipid membrane around it. And his thing was lack of oxygen. So the question was, why is there lack of cellular, not in the bloodstream, 
cellular oxygen. So I deduced it had to be something we're eating because I'm a systems guy. So the input is the food, the system is us, the output is our state of health, how much vitality we have, are we overweight? And it was, okay, the system's great. How do you know the system's great? Well, say I have a Ferrari. Doesn't run well. People are looking at the injectors being screwed up. The timing is off. The spark plug is no good. The gap is different. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody thought to look. Did the genius put the right gasoline in it with the right octane? If you put 89 octane in something that needs 95, it won't run. And I figured it's got to be the fuel, which is our food. And I was right. Turns out the biggest problem today is oil processing. And it's all in the omega-6 oils. And they're used in frying. They're used in baking. They're used in cooking everywhere. So from the junkiest restaurant in the world to all the fast food restaurants to the, even the finest dining establishments are all using oils that are highly, highly processed that are extended so they don't go bad. They don't lose the oxygen. And it sounds good. Well, you just said you want maximum oxygen. But oils are made to oxidize, and there's metabolic pathways for that. The thing is, you don't want them improperly going bad and rancid oxidizing. They will oxidize on their own. And the answer is you need a new supply every day. So here's the bottom line. So. If they go bad, you walk through the fish department in the local supermarket, it smells bad. Well, you can't have cookies or pasta or cereal smelling like fish has gone bad. So the food processors have very little choice. They have to stop that. Fine, they do it. Now you have 100 trillion cells and 25 to 33 percent, quarter to a third of all lipids in the cell membrane are these PEOs, the parent essential oils. Parent essential means we can't get them except for food. Body cannot make them. So if I don't consume them, I'm short. And if you have 100 trillion cells short of something, would you expect there to be a problem? So 100 trillion cells where they're not optimal and many are non-functional. It's like you have plastic in the membrane. Now it's a trans fat, so margarine, nobody should be taking because it lasts forever. You put it in a garage, come back a year later, no bacteria, no virus, no microbe, no animal will touch the darn stuff because it's plastic. It's not a real food. And that's just the way margarine is. Plast Plastics engineer would say margarine's got pretty close to the same structure as plastic. So the food processors have to stop the oxygen transfer. And nobody went, what is going to be the problem with this? I have New York banning trans fats, and what did they replace it with? something worse. So when this came out, I was with colleagues and I said, oh my goodness, they will replace it with something worse because they don't know what the heck they're doing. And they replace it with something called an intrasterified fat, which is a highly processed fat. And if you're diabetic, it makes your blood sugar go up. So it's expediting diabetic conditions, which is horrible. So you can have some of these bad fats, you can have some fast food, but Otto Warburg showed if you have 35% lack of cellular oxygen, you get cancer, it's spontaneous. You don't feel it, it didn't hurt. All of a sudden you've got it. And I wrote a whole book about cancer. It's called The Hidden Story of Cancer. And, and that, that's, that's, that's a whole topic unto itself, but there's no reason why people should be getting cancer. It's lack of oxygen transfer, just like he said. So asbestos will cause inflammation. What does inflammation do? Grabs oxygen, because oxygen usage is the way the body solves everything when it's sick. Ask any doctor, they'll all tell you that. Well, if I'm using excess oxygen in an area that shouldn't be needed, I'm using oxygen from a place that does need, and that's where the cancer shows up in. It can come in any cell of the body. It's only where the oxygen is minimized. So after years of looking at this, it was, my goodness, what ratios do we need? And then there's published studies showing the ratios of the parent omega-6 to parent omega-3, and it's 11 to 1. So the average person, because you said in the beginning, omega-6 is bad, it's inflammatory, right? Well, that's been reversed in two major studies came out, one last year and one before that. They just said this, one guy is the cause of all this nonsense and it's free arachidonic acid, it's technical, you have very little of that. And the more omega-6 you have, the less arachidonic acid is needed. 
and there's no inflammation whatsoever. Actually, arachidonic acid goes to prostacyclin, which is PGI2, makes it where the platelets cannot stick to the arterial wall and they can't stick together. And it's a vasodilator, so it stops a heart attack condition. It impedes it, it reverses it. And the omega-6 series is critical. It makes PGE1, which is the body's number one anti-inflammatory. So there is no science to say any of this nonsense. It all came about by the fish oil companies and it's, it's just a tragedy. So the parents allow all the derivatives to be made. So parents are two, there's parent omega-6, parent omega-3. Have to get them both from food. Flax has the majority of parent omega-3. And in nature, we have very little parent omega-3 in the foods. They're all typically preponderance of parent omega-6 because it's so important. Even a cow eating grass, which is loaded with parent omega-3, has a preponderance of omega-6 in its cell tissue because the body doesn't want the three. It can burn it up. We cannot burn up an overdose of omega-3. So we can get overdoses. The cow is designed to eat it, but nature in her wisdom gets rid of most of it. And it's two to one, parent omega-6 to parent omega-3 in a grass-fed cow. So it's 11 to one. No one is getting an overdose of parent omega-6. They're getting overdoses of adulterated. One word made the difference, adulterated. And when they do all these studies and everything published, they all miss that. They're actually using adulterated omega-6 in all their studies. And this is the reason for heart disease. It's not that the cholesterol goes bad in the body. It's the omega-6 is tied to the cholesterol, so is the omega-3. LDLC cholesterol is the transport system of the PEOs. So if you have bad adulterated omega-6, and they only use omega-6 in cooking. Omega-3 is too reactive. They don't use it for cooking at all. So you'll never say fry in flax oil. Nobody will ever tell you to do that. Nobody will do it. It goes bad instantly. And it's the omega-6 you can cook in because it can take the heat much better before there's any problem with it. So the cholesterol is transporting this. So the statin people had a good first idea. If we lower the cholesterol, we lower the adulterated parent omega-6. And you do. So that's good. The problem is you also lower the good, fully functional parent omega-6. So this is one of the reasons why statins are very marginally effective. The answer isn't a statin. The answer is eat less of the adulterated parent omega-6 if you can. So that's why I like going organic. But if you can't, you better be putting in a good dose of the parent omega-6 that's fully functional, which has to be organic. So if you walk into a supermarket, any regular cooking oil is going to be adulterated. The only time it won't be is if it says organic on it. And that is our number one health problem in America and the world. And no one is paying attention to it. They're saying get vitamins, do this, probiotics, vitamin D, everything. But this is the brick and mortar, the parent omega-6, parent omega-3. And I like having some oil in there that has GLA because there's something called a delta-6 saturous enzyme. And if you are chronically ill, if you're diabetic, if you have any alcoholism in the family, if you're sick, you will make less of that. Remember I said that PGE1 is the body's number one anti-inflammatory. This makes it where you get more automatically. So I like having an oil like even primrose oil that has GLA in it. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seed, sesame seeds are all parent omega-6 side. Flax has got the omega-3, so I like formulations with a little flax, but it's three to one backwards with too much parent omega-3 than parent omega-6. And I know Budwig had a cancer thing years ago where it's taking cottage cheese and flax oil, and that was okay in her time because there was much less adulterated parent omega-6. Today, forget that. You want very little of the flax oil. You don't need any of the cottage cheese. That work then, it's an outdated problem because today the number one problem by a factor of 10 is adulterated parent omega-6 oils. And everything stems from it because they are the brick and mortar of every cell in your body. A lot of other things work as cofactors, help things work better, you know, like minerals, 
they're cofactors and they're coenzymes actually. So they make the vitamins work better. But these parent oils are the brick and mortar. The parents allow what's called derivatives to be made. So GLA is a derivative of parent omega-6. Arachidonic acid is a derivative of parent omega-6. PGI-2, prostacyclin, derivative of omega-6. PGE-1, derivative of omega-6. The omega-3 derivatives are very, very weak. I want everybody listening to understand that. They are very weak. They are incomparable in power to the omega-6. This nonsense with fish oil solves everything came because people were desperate. And I was around when it started. And I would ask the wholesaler, is anybody buying this? And they'd go, no. Year after year, no. Took 15 years, hundreds of millions of dollars to con everybody into thinking fish oil is the answer. Now, DHA, EPA, it is in the brain. But nobody asks how much is used on a daily basis. And I have no vendetta against fish oil. It's just because everybody started saying fish oil is an EFA, I started really looking at it and going, no, it's not. And it turns rancid at room temperature, by the way. So DHA, EPA from fish oil, this is why fish smells when you're at the supermarket. And that's even after it's cooled down. So fish oil goes rancid at room temperature. We need 7.2 milligrams a day. Write this down in Anybody that's taking fish oil, that's at the upper end. National Institutes of Health looked at this. The radioisotope, the fish oil, and how much goes in the brain a day? 7.2 milligrams. Oh, Brian, but there's the eye uses a lot of it too. Fine, double it. 15 milligrams a day is all anybody would use, and this is a big size brain. So there's very small to very big. This is on the upper end because I'm conservative, so I'll go high. So double it. There's no way you need more than 15 milligrams. Take a look at what the average capsule is, 1,000 milligrams, and it can easily be 60% DHA EPA. You have 600 when you need 15. That's a factor of 40 overdose. People are taking three or four grams. They are getting factors of 100, 200, 300 fold what the body needs on a daily basis. You go, okay, big deal, you burn it up. No, you won't. Dr. Lands proved that the oils go into the cell membrane in proportion of what you eat. And the biggest problem is if you overdose on fish oil, like every recommendation is doing, it displaces the parent omega-6. Big deal you go. Oh, what's the big deal? Major deal, just came out last year. Cardiolipin, mitochondrial cardiolipin is where the energy comes from in every cell and your heart. If you are taking a lot of fish oil, the Parent omega-6 is thrown out, the DHA EPA from fish oil goes in, and the mitochondria doesn't work. It's impeded by up to 50%. Nobody looked at this article. I saw no one reference it. I live in the highly technical articles like Journal of Lipids, uh, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, essential fatty acids. Doctors don't look at these. Scientific medical researchers do. Doctors look at JAMA, Lancet. This is clinical where they're giving their patients stuff. Not research typically in groups and going, what's going on here, and even in animals. But this was in people they looked at. And the article actually said, when you put the parent omega-6 back in, comes to the rescue. They use the word rescue. And it goes on and on. These oils are shown in the membrane in breast cancer patients. You're not supposed to have cancer. It's not supposed to metastasize. The cell membrane actually came out, grabbed the cancer cell, and pulled it back in. And you go, Brian, that's wonderful if the cell membrane works. Now, if you don't have the right structure, the parent omega-6 and parent omega-3, and you're overdosing it with fish oil, and you're eating a pile of trans-fatted foods or highly processed foods that don't work, the cell membrane can't go out. And what they looked at is they didn't even get is the oil in the cell membrane, the lipid structure. They were talking about the protein. Well, if you cut the protein out, which is an amino acid, it won't go out and come back. That's not the issue. Nobody has a problem with that. What they have the problem with is the the oils in the membrane itself. And this is also the reason we have Alzheimer's. It's known it's a microvascular disease because if the nutrients can't get to the brain, 
you got a problem, right? You can't think straight, everything's gonna starve. You have hundreds of millions of capillaries in the brain that feed the nerves. Guess what a capillary is made of? 100% parent omega-6, 100%. The nerves are not dead in Alzheimer's. They just had a major article come out on that last year. It shocked everybody. I saw nobody pick up on that because they thought, oh, the nerves are dead. No, they're not working. Why? Because they're starved of nutrients. So Alzheimer's, no one should be getting either, and it should be reversible. I haven't looked at a lot of it, but theoretically, I'm a theoretical physiologist, basically. So I like doing experiments to confirm what the science predicts. And that's what really gets me excited when it does. But the Alzheimer's, it should be able to reverse that based on theoretical concerns. So it's very exciting. Also, the inner lining of your artery, it's called the lumen, is the artery, where there's an inner lining and it's multi-layered of intima, all parent omega-6. So it's supposed to be layer of parent omega-6, layer of parent omega-6. And if that's adulterated, if that's not functional, heart disease. So would you predict heart disease is number one and cancer is number two? Absolutely. We don't get the oxygen. And it takes a long time to get cancer, by the way. Otto Warburg showed in, in, in predicted it would take a long time. In 1953 and 1955, they did studies in America. Two years, they deprived heart cells of oxygen. Every one of them became cancerous. When they kept the oxygen on those same strain of heart cells, no problem. So they absolutely proved it, but nobody knew how to solve the problem. Why this lack of oxygen? And again, in the bloodstream, no issue. Everybody's got that. To measure that, it's called pulse oximeter. Uh, in the hospital, you know, it's going to be 90, 93, 95, 96. So there's always oxygen in the bloodstream. Unless somebody is chronically ill, no issue. What they don't measure and they can't measure unless you're in, you know, a laboratory medical school is the internal oxygen. And that's the problem. So heart disease, cancer tied together, fundamental same cause. And it goes on and on. PGE1 dissolves occlusions in the arteries. So if you have a clogged artery, PGE1 dissolves it. Professor Weiss, Dr. Weiss in Germany had this in 1981. And nobody is picking up on this science. So what I do is I connect the dots. But again, I'm a theoretist, so I love looking. And we've looked at people healing faster from surgery, from falling, from anything, through the roof, compared to people that don't have these oils. And it's predictable. Again, the brick and mortar and the biggest anti-inflammatory is one of the biggest healers, the PGE-1. So of course it should. And the results we get, everybody goes, you know, this is shocking. And I've been around it for so long. No, it's not shocking. It's just the world's biggest secret. So what I'm trying to do now is get the word out of what these oils do. But it's, it's a battle. Everybody is just on the fish oil wagon. It, it comes out, Cochrane came out that it's worthless doesn't work at all, but keep using it is what every doctor says. No, it's, it doesn't help heart disease, it doesn't help macular degeneration, it doesn't help dementia, it doesn't, it didn't help any of them. But keep using it. That's insane. Why would you do that? And it always comes out 10, 20, 30 years later. New research shows. Well, who's, who's accountable for the old research? And why did this get out there? And there's just so much about this. So I hope people will really take this to heart and read. If you care about diet first, it's 24 hour diet. If you care about health first, because you're chronically <laughs> sick or something, it's PEL solution. They both cover the same stuff, of course, but with very different focuses. And the science is what you should ask people. And anybody listening, please ask your doctor, please ask your nutritionist. If anybody says anything, sir, madam, doctor, how does it work? What is the metabolic pathway? What is the metabolic pathway and if they can't give you one magic and witchcraft is not acceptable here it's your health and you'll have a bad death if you listen to wrong information and we get blamed you know it's not the advice that's wrong it's your fault and I just get sick of that because I hear that all the time with my patients you know I'm an exception you know I, I you know they said I didn't follow what I followed it to the T well, their advice is wrong because it's not based on science. And studies, I want to make very clear, are not science. I talk about this a lot in PEO Solution. Studies are not science. Even doctors today go, show me the study. I go, wait a minute. You look at the science first, the 
biochemistry, the physiology should predict which way it works, like fish oil. Oh, I took fish oil, my skin got better. Really, are you sure? Oh yeah, how? There's no fish oil in your skin, it's all parent omega-6. So how'd it happen? And they just look at me. You did three other things, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't, but it sure as heck didn't happen from the fish oil, and this is the problem. You get people attributing an effect to the wrong thing. So, like I said, I can go on and on with this, but cancer, heart disease, diabetes, oily fish made diabetics worse. You're told to take the oily fish, right? To get more of the DHA, EPA. Made diabetics worse, and this was in three or four studies. All independent, all the same answer. You never hear anybody talking about it. They won't talk about it. Shuts down the mitochondrial <laughs> cardiolipin in, in the enzymes. They don't talk about it. You know, it, 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 as a scientist, it's just staggering to me. And then everybody that's promoting fish oil will, will not say I was wrong. Most people will not admit they're wrong. Now, a big doctor did, and it's in PEO solution. I have a confession to make. You can read it for yourself. But it's very, very rare someone will admit they're wrong today. And it's just tragic because people listen to wrong, outdated stuff and get sicker and sicker. It's insane. For the past two years, our life expectancy has gone down. Now, it hasn't gone down by much, but you go, why shouldn't it be increasing like heck? Look at all the, the, the better drugs that are out there, the better hospitals, the better everything, and we're not living as long? Something's really wrong here. It has to be the food again. <laughs> That's the only common thing. We're all breathing the same air. You know, the only difference is the food. So I'm sure you have a few questions. I've, I've gone on for a while. I could talk about this all day long. No, but, well, yeah, thank you so much. Questions. Uh, Can I just summarize what you said? To, of course. So, okay. We have 100 trillion cells in our body, approximately. Yes. Each of those has a cell membrane around it yes. that protects what's the mitochondria and other things. It protects it and also allows in and out of nutrient transfer. So everything goes through there like insulin. So if you have a defective cell membrane, guess what? You're insulin, you're insulin resistant. You get yep. more and more resistance because the cell membrane won't let it in. So all of this goes back, exactly. Sorry and to interrupt. The doorway to the cell, inside the cell, is the omega-6. It's the parent omega-6. Yep, it is. And that's because it attracts oxygen. It's an oxygen magnet. So yes, it, you breathe in air through your lungs, it goes into your blood, and yep. then it goes into the cell through that bilipid membrane you talk about, and that the part it goes in through is the omega-6. Yes, and the omega-6 can actually disassociate and give us oxygen too, so there's two ways it can go. It's, it's complicated biochemistry and physiology, but yep. yes, the omega-6 is key. That's why the body wants 11 to 1 compared to the omega-3, and almost no DHA, EPA. Uh, almost none to speak of uh, compared with the parent mega six and three. That's why they're the parents. <laughs> they're so, important. So then food processors come in and yeah. they, they can't have that reactivity. Otherwise the, right. the, the oil is going to go bad too quickly. Smell. And so they do things like hydrogenation and yep. interesterification. Is that, is that yep. correct? Yeah, and, and what that does is it basically kills the oxygen transfer. So your body still builds its cell membrane with the adulterated oil, but it no yes. longer will allow oxygen into the cell for respiration. You got it. doesn't work. It's so I, I, I just grabbed some of these from, like, I went to the regular grocery store. This is soybean oil, and this is canola oil. And if you, look at, if you look at the back, you got... Uh, polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. EFAs are polyunsaturated. So parent omega-6, parent omega-3 means more than one double bond. So olive oil uh, is monounsaturated. And parent omega-6 is two, flax is three. Uh, you know, go DHA is six, EPA is five. So the more double bonds, the more reactive, the more problems. Now you go, well, if it's problems, why is your brain want it? Well, it's a two-edged sword. In your brain, it's used. But in your brain, 100 to 1, parent omega-6 to parent omega-3. So that should tell you something if anybody cares to look, which they don't. But again, National Institutes of Health did, and USDA did, and published this back in 2010. Um, 
it's there. Nobody looks at it. So even in the brain, it's 100 to 1. This is why all the taking DHA, EPA doesn't help concussions at all. There'd be a drug if it did. If fish oil did half of what they said, there would be multiple drugs. They only get one indication, lowering super high triglycerides. That's it. And, it, and this stuff's been out for 20 years. And one thing drug companies do is do trials. That's where they spend the money. I assure you, if it did anything else, there would be fish oil drugs with indications for Alzheimer's, macular degeneration. They all fail. Dementia, they all fail. And it just doesn't work, and people don't change. I even go to all the, you know, you, you know, the health food stores. Is fish oil down? When when a major re review article like Cochrane came out last year saying it doesn't work, we looked at 25 superb studies, absolute failure. Out of all the studies, they go, oh, there's 15,000. They found 25 that were double blind, placebo controlled. They said all the rest were garbage. So once again, why do you have so many? Because there's a five percent confidence inaccuracy. So if I do 15,000 studies, 5% of 15,000 is 750. It means 750 actually failed, but give the appearance that it works. That's why they never stop because they get a few successes because they're working on 95% confidence intervals. And I talk about this in PEO solution is statistics and we get misled all over the place, but didn't mean to interrupt you. you, you got it. So those oils that are processed right there, soy is food for a pig. It's an endocrine disruptor. No one in their right mind should be eating soy, anything. If you want tofu, you can have a little of it. It's not a meat replacer in China or the Orient. They use very little. Canola oil, same thing, a uh, compound is rapeseed. Mustard gas was made with that. These are horrible oils. Canola stands for Canada oil. It's not a strain of anything. It's rapeseed oil, and they can't sell anything with that name, so they changed it. Horrible oil. Come into America, boot out the coconut oil, which is a phenomenal oil to fry in because it's highly saturated. So a saturated fat's great to fry in. doesn't go bad. That's what you want. You don't want the oil going bad. So coconut oil, palm oil, lard, great to fry in, no problem. This whole saturated fat nonsense came from, you know, just people making very bad mistakes, just like cholesterol. A doctor looked at seven countries and he booted out seven other countries where they had a lot of cholesterol and no heart disease. So he got the curve he wanted. And nobody said, this is garbage, you ought to be shot because you didn't take into account the other seven. You got rid of half of them to show a result you wanted to show. Nothing was done to the guy. Nothing was done to this guy. It's his whole fault that this nonsense is coming. And then everything's a merry-go-round. In my books, I have people on merry-go-rounds. It's like 20 years later. We can put a man on the moon. He can have a, an iPhone. You can have a computer. I can't tell you what to eat. Do you know how insulting a comment like that is to me? I don't know what to eat. You can put a man on the moon. You can't tell me what the heck I should be eating. Well, there's biochemistry and there's physiology. And that's why I wrote 24 hour diet for doctors. So they could tell their patients, here's what you eat based on science. <laughs> Everything in moderation, no. A little uh, arsenic in moderation isn't good. And that's what I'd say if I knew nothing because I minimize my risk of everything in moderation. You're not gonna get too much of anything, but there's no insight there, there's no intelligence there. That's pretty much what an idiot would say if he knew nothing. <laughs> right. A smart idiot. <laughs> so so when, I, when I talk about this, um, well, first of all, even the, they fry in omega-6, right? But it, let's, oh, yeah. let's say this, yeah. but let's say it was organic and unrefined. You still, you don't wanna heat those oils up if it was raw. And the omega-6 pretty well. It, you can heat it up. Yeah, yeah, you can. The omega-6, um, deep frying I wouldn't do, but to make an egg or something, yep. a absolutely. Uh, you can even do deep frying in it. It, it can take some heat, but I like uh, palm oil for uh, deep frying. Ghee is great, but it's expensive. That's clarified butter where you get rid of all the protein because the protein's burning up in it. So you just keep the liquid. That's got about a 480 smoke point, which is huge. Um, olive oil is not good to fry. And you can saute an egg again. You know, that's, that's light frying, but not deep frying. But yeah, they do use the uh, omega-6 cooking oils. And 
the omega-9 is olive oil. Um, there is omega-9 in all the oils. It's naturally occurring. And that can take some heat too. So if, if you're interested in oils, you, you want to look at oils with the highest smoke point. And that means it won't start burning up on you. Right. And, and palm oil is huge too. That's in the 400s, maybe 420, 440. But he is, he is superb. Coconut oil? Coconut oil, is, uh, it, coconut oil is very good. I like a combination, coconut palm oil. I think Nutria has that you can get on the internet, combinations of palm and, and coconut. But be careful because it's red. I like red palm. If you get it on you, 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 get, you know, it's red. It's, it's getting stained something. Oh. But it's superb to fry in. And you don't taste it. You don't taste coconut oil. You smell it. But you don't taste it at all, which is very interesting. But very, very healthy oil. Now, the coconut oil has very few EFAs in it. It's got 7% per omega-6. It has other stuff in it. And that's a big thing with the ketogenic diet. So everything I talk about is high fat, higher protein, low carbohydrate. And these oils, now that we're on the subject of carbohydrates, everybody's a carbivore. Eat, crave, eat, crave. They never get enough carbs. And the cookie companies know this. Bet you can't eat just one. You're darn right you can't eat just one. Eat one whole pack. You put the parent oils back in, your body goes, ah, you finally gave me what I need. The hunger goes away. It naturally fulfills the hunger and it naturally fulfills the craving for carbohydrates and sweets. And I talk about this in the book too. But it's phenomenal. It, it's dieter's best friend. I mean, because you want to be where you can be fulfilled, where I can walk by the pizza, I can walk by the cake. And it's not, darn it, I really want that stuff. I know it's bad for me. I can't have it. I'm going to fart. I don't want it. Right. I literally, it's like I've got two cats. There's always food out there full. 90% of the time they walk by the bowl, they don't need it. You know what's in their food? Pile of omega-6. <laughs> so the cats get the oils. Now they're unfortunately putting fish oil in the cat food because cats don't need fish. They're ruining them too. It, it, it's very unfortunate. It goes on and on. But back back to the cooking oils. Uh, those are highly unpro. They'll be they'll have no smell or anything. When you smell those oils, they're not food, and and they look white. I mean, it's been deodorized. It's been bleached. It's been cooked to death. Uh, it, it's 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 not a food, and it's gonna and it's killing us all. That is the problem fundamentally with everything. And it's that simple to fix that everything. Yep. So like the, the canola oil and the, the soybean oil, the vegetable oil that you get at the regular supermarket, is that interesterified? Is that, is that? Oh, it's not interesterified. It's just horrible oil. Okay. The margarine kind of stuff is the interesterified. Um, but these oils, they're non-functional. And the problem is they go into the food. So if you're making a pie crust with these oils, or if you're making a salad dressing with these oils and you're eating it, big problem. Now, if you're frying it, some of it's going to come into the food, you know, in, in, into the food too. And you just don't need it. You don't need this stuff. We're killing ourselves unknowingly. Organic oils, sunflower is an okay one. And now they've changed all the cooking oils to have high omega-9 because the omega-9 can take heat better too. But you don't get the parent omega-6. Like sunflower oil, they have the omega-9 strain that the restaurants use. And it's very hard to get the natural sunflower seed that was 75% parent omega-6. Now it's 75% omega-9, which is like olive oil. Your body makes it. It's a non-essential. Your body makes olive oil. You don't need to be eating it. You can't eat it, but your body makes that. Okay. So uh, the main problem with oils like this is the fact that they, they, they chemically they process it, and that's, that's how it kills the oxygen transferring? Yeah. They heat it up. They process it. It doesn't work. There's chemical reasons for this, but you don't need a course in chemistry. They don't work. It's all you need to know. If you okay. want to put something into 100 trillion cells that acts like a piece of plastic, I've had doctors tell me, oh, Brian, oxygen transfers automatically. You don't need anything. I said, really? Yeah. Would oxygen go across plastic? Well, no. I said, well, what the heck do you think these oils are when they're adulterated? It's like a piece of plastic in there. They don't even think about this because they're not used to, if the substrate is screwed up, do we have a problem? Same thing with biochemists. They assume 
the substrates you have are fully functional. Well, that's a bad assumption here. It's not fully functional. You're eating a poison. All the oxidized cholesterol, and that's the problem, is ingested. Doesn't go bad in the body. Dr. Speiteller of Germany, brilliant biochemist, shareholder, wrote superb work on this, how all the oxidized cholesterol is ingested from what we eat, from those oils. And it's not going on in the body. You ate it that way. And the way they measure cholesterol, remember I told you it's tied to the parent essential oils. It's called esterification. It's like a magnet. The whole thing's ground up and you have the cholesterol and you have the PEOs together. They don't separate it. It's all oxidized cholesterol as one big glob. And you know, most people don't understand what they're even measuring. But it doesn't happen in the body. It happens from what you ate. And this is the one thing we can control. You can't control the air. You can't control a pile of stuff. You can 100% control what you shove in your mouth. Now, you may not have the money to do 100% of what you want, but you can do a few things very intelligently to get a lot of bang for the buck, and that's what I'm about. But I want people knowing the science first. That's why I write books so that you can read this. And if you don't care enough to read and spend eight hours understanding what you need and how your body works, good luck to you, because you're gonna be in trouble. Right, so you touched on it before, but you recommend for frying the saturated fats, the coconut oils, ghee, uh, palm oil. Um, well, saturated then, and monounsaturated, they're combinations. Okay. That's uh, the kind of structure. They're, and they're stable and they're un Very stable and they're non reactive to oxygen. Very much. Yeah. I mean, okay. everything is going to degrade at a certain time and temperature, but you never cook. Like, I have a fryer at home. I, I do fry foods. The highest it goes to is 370. So I'm using ghee that has a smoke point of 480. So I'm not even close to a problem. And you can actually cook at 350 all day long, maybe just a little longer. And there's a 300 setting too. So it's not hard to do. And that's for deep frying. I like French fries. I like fried shrimp, fried scallops, fried codfish. There's no problem with frying. <laughs> but everything I use is organic. Now, where the money should be spent is anything you eat with fat in it. So cream, butter, eggs, cheese, bacon, organic. Because that's where all the pesticides and the residues also go from what the animal is fed. And if you think the animals are being fed good food, they're all fed steroids, they're all fed hormones, unless it's organic. And I don't care if it says all natural, that means nothing. That's not an FDA certification or USDA certification. It's a meaningless terms. You will be lied to. And when they say they don't feed them hormones, most of them are lying too. Or, or antibiotics, it means most of the time they don't feed them that. They're sick, I assure you, they're getting antibiotics unless it's organic and they can't do it at all. But the laws are very, very in favor of companies. Uh, yeah, um, I saw yeah. that they now, I, I don't know if this is a new thing, but on most labels, they have the trans fat label under monounsaturated, but they're not making the distinction between uh, is it functional or not? Is it right? And, and here's another problem with trans fats: uh, half a gram in, in a serving they consider zero. Well, half a gram overpowers every cell in your body by about a factor of ten thousand to one. When you look at the number of molecules, of trans. <laughs> it's horrible. I give the calculation in the book. It's unbelievable. If it's less than half a gram, it's considered zero. It's not zero, and it's harmful. We keep getting misled. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. That's why I don't really have people read and make yourself the expert. Right. Um, what, what people ask me when I recommend the saturated fats for frying is, isn't that so full of cholesterol? And well, I said, oh, that's what my next question. Yeah, is there such a thing as bad cholesterol? If you eat it from an animal that is being fed steroids and hormones, sure, um, because then they're processing that animal. So animals, that's where cholesterol comes from. It's, it, it, it's in an animal product. The, the plants don't have cholesterol. They have other things, but not 
not cholesterol per se. But again, the problem is not cholesterol. Cholesterol is the most important nutrient in your body, by the way. Look in the textbook of medical physiology, there's 10 major things that cholesterol does. So this whole thing about is bad, that was made up too. In 1990, there was no quote, bad cholesterol. There is no good and bad, just cholesterol goes in, comes out. It's a transport system. The whole thing with bad was made up. It's horrible and you even have the medical profession saying bad cholesterol. It's not bad. The more cholesterol you ingest, the less your body makes. So your body wants cholesterol for stability. It's a very waxy substance, it's needed. It's needed in the cell membrane. And it's, 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 it's a healer. But again, the problem isn't the cholesterol, it's what the cholesterol is transporting. So the whole thing is just, nobody gets this. The truth is in the medical literature, uh, I've seen it, but again, it's in the literature that the doctor is not reading because it's not clinical, it's theoretical, and they're not looking there. They don't have time for that, for treating patients. I don't blame them at all, they have no time, you can't do everything. So that's why there's somebody like me that just doesn't have patience, it's not a doctor that looks at the medical science, uh, but nobody's getting it, that's the problem, the people aren't seeing it. The doctors are so overworked, they have no time to, 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 to look at this. I mean, there's lots of them that do, don't get me wrong, but the average one, no way in heck. You're, you're not going to get them. They have no understanding of, of what a, an EFA even is. You say essential fatty acid, they'll just look at you. What? So are they, is it sort of killing the messenger when you're saying that cholesterol is bad? It's, yes. it's a transport system. Yes. And it, so Trans if it's, if it's carrying, it's a Trojan horse. If it's the Trojan horse and it's full of uh, Greek soldiers about to slip in and destroy everything, and that's the adulterated oils. You got it. You got it. So the 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 main takeaway is you want a fully functional, unprocessed, organic, extra virgin, expeller pressed, omega six three, uh, with some GLA. With some GLA, just because of how how hard we've been hit. Yes. Okay. Delta six to saturase. This this bypasses that. So that, that will be impeded. Like I said, if you're diabetic, if you have cancer, if you're undergoing chemo or radiation, any kind of disease, if you drink a lot, all of that will be impaired. So luckily by knowing the science, you can get around that and bypass it. So it's 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 the GLA. But you're right, it has to be organic. Just cold press or expeller press isn't good enough. It has to have, yeah, I talk about it in the book, what you really want to look for. And there's very few companies that do it right because they all market to what people think they need. When I design something or I recommend something, I have no interest in what people say they want. Like for uh, a mineral, my first comment was from the best mineral people in the world, which is Albion Labs, no calcium. You'd agree, right? He goes, oh yeah, you don't need calcium, but everybody thinks it's important. You, you better put it in there to sell it. I said, I'm not a marketeer. I'm not putting it in there. Calcium's in everything. Anybody thinks they have a calcium deficiency, they're crazy. You have something called tetany where your, your, your hand is start shaking. Look at the textbook of medical physiology. It's no problem. Osteoporosis, it's nothing to do with like a calcium. <laughs> it's insane. People aren't eating enough salt. That's a problem because instead of the calcium, <laughs> the sodium should be used. So I mean, we, we keep getting this lead all over the place. It's not the cause of osteoporosis. Uh, it's a rickets issue. Um, we keep, it's, it's, osteoporosis is the bone structure, and that's made of PEOs. So you get back to that again. They make up the bone. So we've had people fall and have very, very crushing falls. The nose didn't break. No fracture, cheek didn't break. I, I have this in my hand out to physicians or surgeons, and it's shocking, absolutely shocking. Uh, absolutely. Um, I just, if I can just summarize what we're we've been talking about, this the, these problems are caused by food processors. If there was no food processors, processors, we wouldn't need you for exactly. what for what you're doing. Um, so. I personally, I, I, what I realized once I started researching in, you know, your work is that, that it's everywhere. The processed oils are everywhere, but I still want to be able to go out 
and eat at a restaurant with my friends. Like last night, I went to a restaurant, we ordered French fries, and I'm sure those are be not being fried in organic, um, you know, parent essential oil. So I personally take a supplement so I can do those kinds of things. But if, it, if there wasn't the processed oils, we wouldn't need the supplement. But nope. the supplements very, I've been taking a supp, uh, parent essential supplement since 2007. And I've, I mean, you know, you have all, a lot of clinical data. You have the, the scientific support from the textbooks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But my personal case, it's, it's, it's true to me as well, just from the results. That's the bottom line. I'm all about real life results. Remember, I'm an engineer by training. You right. know, theory is great, but if the iPhone blows up in your face, <laughs> it doesn't work. That's a real life result. It better work. So bottom line is it better work, and it does in, in everybody. I mean, the energy people get is through the roof. Most people have no idea how they should feel. They feel like garbage, and they may have a garbage plus a tad, but they feel like garbage all day. They have no idea what laser attention is. We can look at a problem for hours and hours and hours and just think how much advantage your kid will have in college or high school or elementary school, you know, not jumping around, having attention. There's no reason for ADD and ADHD. This is all garbage. Never used to exist. None of these things ever. You, oh, they just didn't monitor it back then. My mother was a teacher. It said, Brian, it didn't exist. You had the one or two hypertensive kids out of 30. Now you have the one or two normal ones out of 30. It's, they all, all the teachers retire early. It, it, it's absolutely horrible. These conditions did not exist. Everybody being vitamin D deficient did not exist. There's no issue. Everybody needing probiotics did not exist. Why? Because most of these things aren't real issues. They're made up in marketing. Whole probiotics thing is more, I think you can do more harm than good. So everything is an epidemic. Nobody goes, why is this a cause? No. And antibiotics do wipe out the gut, but they become okay. And then what makes you think you know the ideal things to replenish it with? You're probably going to put in the wrong stuff. And then they have people taking it forever. Insane. I can tell you exactly why people may need fully functional parent essential oils, because of food processors. So other people can't give me metabolic pathways for anything else. And half of what they say doesn't make sense, because you can find contradictory results with what they're saying in people that should have these problems. Why don't they? There's tons of people that take antibiotics. How come they're not all screwed up? Oh, they are. Fine. You know, you can say anything you want, but you got to prove it to me with some kind of a measurement. So it's, it's just horrible. People are spending so much time and effort and money on things that don't matter at all. They're probably even making themselves worse, but they're certainly not making themselves better. The parent essential oil deficiency is the number one problem in the world. And nobody knows it. Nobody knows. That's a shame. Uh, you've given me a lot of your time. Thank you so much. Can I ask you one last question? I, we didn't sure. you. Fruit. Is fruit in a category of its own? And is it considered, if you're following a ketogenic diet, would fruit be your friend in this case? Yeah, excellent question. I didn't used to think so. But then Dr. Rowan told me about... Uh, a study with fruit. So my wife is a type one diabetic. So I gave her 10 ounces of peaches, measured her blood sugar before, waited an hour, hour and a half, measured it after, went up 10 points, 12 points, something, I don't know, maybe 14 points. It should have gone up 140 points is, is, is the gist. Cause you can figure out how much glucose is in the darn thing. And there's, there's a fair amount of it. So it should have raised, raised it 14, 16. Okay. Something wrong with the meter or something. Checked it, perfect, was accurate, you know, within 2%. So it's not a meter issue. Okay, we're doing this tomorrow. This, this doesn't make sense. Where the heck did it go? Did it the next day, came out the same basic thing, maybe 10 or 11. It was my goodness. And I started researching what transport systems are because glucose goes into the bloodstream, it's called GLUT4, and that's the whole insulin response thing. Turns out there's about 10 different places this glucose can go. Number one, it can fuel the automatic nervous system, never hits the bloodstream. I didn't know any of this. It was my goodness. So fruit is in a different category. Now, something like mush, banana, and pineapple, you don't want. those. There's a few you have to exclude. But most fruits, 
you get a quarter to a half of the glycemic, and that's what you call it, the glycemic change in the bloodstream from the fruit where your blood sugar goes up because insulin gets glucose, sugar out of the blood, and it goes right to body fat. So insulin in textbook medical physiology, fat storage hormone. So you want to minimize that, but we do have a sweet tooth and fruit actually has PEOs in it. And if you're a bit, you're raw foods vegan like Dr. Rowan, you can get enough of the PEOs eating fruits and vegetables because he eats no negatives, so there's nothing to counteract it, and he eats a lot of them, so it's doable, but very few people are raw food vegan. But this really got me looking, so compared to, say, a cake, a fruit is much more bang for the buck, and you typically don't eat a lot. So I have a protein powder fruit smoothie combo. Protein powder makes it where it's more milkshake consistency instead of a ground ice snow cone, and you freeze the fruit, make it, and you're so full because you can have a quart of the stuff. It's, it's a water diet and it won't bloat you. You can have this at night. If you're diabetic, you have, have it for your meal at six o'clock. You could have the pizza, the ice cream, the cake. You won't want it. So it's phenomenal. So fruit can be in a different class and you just have to see what the best fruit for you is. But I'll have smoothies with strawberries, cantaloupe, honeydew. You could have blueberries, raspberries. Um, like I said, Pineapple is not a good one. And banana is a horrible one. I used to be a bodybuilding diet, you know, years and years ago, and I'd live on bananas, two to three, because, you know, they tell you you're good. I never lost the weight. Then I, then I, a banana is seven teaspoons of sugar, and all goes right into the bloodstream. So it's horrible. So I was eating 20 teaspoons of sugar. We have one in the bloodstream. I mean, I can go on and on here. We have limited time. We have one teaspoon of sugar in the bloodstream. You eat more than one, and you're not burning it up with exercise immediately. It goes right to fat immediately so fruit is special category so i hope people will read about this because i was shocked i actually sent the food off to a food lab to have it analyzed with sucrose galactose <laughs> fructose yeah 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 fruit uh, see, see what the heck is in it and uh i talk about that analysis and uh it's different so fruit is mother nature's natural candy beautiful it, yeah it's interesting stuff so if I'm sure people are going to want to know more, where can they find more of this from you, your books? Uh, where, where's yeah, the best my place? My website's to... the best thing. Just my name, Brian Peskin. It's B as in boy, R-I-A-N, P as in parent, E-S-K-I-N.com. There's a lot of science there. There's a lot of papers there. It won't cost anybody anything. If they really care, they, they can get one of the books. Um, you just need to know this information yourself because if you know this, you'll know more than any physician on the planet. And you, they just don't know it and they can't be expected to know it because this right. isn't doing, but if they don't know it, how can they tell you what to do? And they'll give you an answer because you asked them. Problem is going to be the wrong answer. And most don't say, you know, good question. I don't know. As a patient, you don't want to hear that. You right. want to hear it and it'll likely be a wrong answer. Now you won't be, have to ask it at all. You'll know the answer. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time. I just want to say one more time, you've changed my life. I owe you a giant my, thank you. My pleasure. And uh, hopefully um, we can talk again. Thank you so sure. much, Professor. My pleasure. Take care. Thank you.